of Galatians, right? We have come to chapter 4 and we looked at uh, the first seven verses. So um, let's continue on. Okay. So in chapter 4, Galatians, um, Paul is saying that uh, he's talking about the, uh, about the son, about the child, and um, how the child in the early days, in the young days, does not differ, is not any different from the servants, um, from the slaves who are there in the house in terms of rights and uh, in terms of uh, freedom, right? The child is protected, the child is in the house. And um, he's talking about the, uh, you know, the, the role of the law, uh, the role that the law has placed, uh, played in all our lives. And uh, he's saying, you know, this is what has happened. You know, even though uh, the child is there, the child does not enjoy that freedom or the inheritance till an appointed time. Okay? So he goes on to say that, you know, the child is under guardians and stewards until the time appointed by the father. Now, um, now if you if you look at, uh, you know, what Paul is talking about, he's actually talking about a Roman, Roman household, not a Jewish or a Greek household. Like in the Jewish... Um, culture and tradition and in the Greek culture and tradition, um, there is already, you know, a set date and time, you know, for the child to be recognized as an adult, uh, for uh, typically for the son to be recognized as a, as a, you know, as a man, right? uh, you know, certain uh, number of uh, years. So automatically, you know, at that, okay, this person is you know, maybe 15 years or 14 years or whatever, you know, uh, I'm not sure about the specifics, but uh, at that age, the child is automatically recognized as an adult, right? And and then, you know, all the uh, the freedom that comes with it, the inheritance, rec recognition uh, of um, the child being an adult, all that, you know, uh, happens at that time. But in a Roman uh, tradition what happens is the the father decides right the father decides uh, the father decides okay uh, uh, based on observation and and everything the father decides that okay this is the time the time has come for my son to be recognized as a man okay the father decides so paul is actually using that in um, that is the usage you know uh, that is the understanding because paul is saying you know um is under guardians and stewards. This, he's talking about the child. In, uh, this is chapter four and verse two. Under guardians and stewards until the time appointed by the father. Even so, we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of the time had come, God sent forth a son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, that we might receive the adoption as sons okay so typically um you know the same usage you know that um uh, until the time appointed by the father um the same understanding is there even in verse 5 when he says that uh, that we might receive the adoption as sons so so in the again in the roman uh, tradition uh, the the child is you know when when uh, when the father says, "Okay, this is the time appointed. I'm going to recognize," so it's like it's like adopting. You know, it's like saying that this uh, this is now my son, and all the rights and privileges that are there now I bestowing. You know, I'm just placing on my on my son. Okay, so uh, Paul is referring to that. So Paul is saying that when the Kairos moment, that that opportune time had come, God sent forth the sent forth His Son, right, uh, to redeem those who were under the law. So why is he referring to the law? He's talking about again talking about people who are going back to the law. He's uh, he's talking about the role of the law, and here he's saying that God is actually, you know, at that appointed time, the Father sent the Son to redeem those who were under the who were under the law right and um, here uh, verse 6 says because you are sons god has sent for the spirit of his son into your hearts crying out abba father so the holy spirit uh, he has sent forth who, who resides in you now now enables you to cry out abba father now uh, enables uh, uh, and and also romans 8 we we saw that verse where uh, it says that we cry out 
uh, that uh, Abba Father, because His Spirit testifies to our spirit that we are children of God, that we are sons of God. Right. So, verse seven. Therefore, you are no longer a slave, but a son. You are no longer a slave to sin. You are no longer held by the law, but you are set free. You have, you know, reached that stage of being adopted. So you are a son. And the rest of the verse is that if you are a son, then an heir of God through Christ. You know, it's just wonderful. From a slave, you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if you are a son, then this is what happens: that you are an heir, and in so which means that you receive the inheritance. Right? It's not that you are a nobody, but you are uh, uh, an heir. You receive the inheritance that is given, uh, that is due to you. So, which means whatever belongs to the father now um, has been given to you. Right? Whatever is the possession, whatever is the the riches. Um, uh, is now yours because you are the son. Legally, you are a heir and you receive the inheritance. Okay, so that is what we see here. Um, okay, let's. So now today, let's let's continue from verse eight. Okay, verse eight. But then, indeed, when you did not know God, you served those which by nature are not gods. But now, after you have known God or rather are known by God, how is it that you turn again to the weak and beggarly elements to which you desire again to be in bondage? You observe days and months and seasons and years. I'm afraid for you, lest I have labored for you in vain. Brethren, I urge you to become like me, for I became like you. You have not injured me at all. You know that because of physical infirmity, I preached the gospel to you at the first. And my trial, which was in my flesh, you did not despise or reject. But you received me as an angel of God, even as Christ Jesus. What then was the blessing you enjoyed? For I bear you witness, if possible, you would have plucked your own eyes and given them to me. Have I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth? They zealously court you, but for no good. Yes, they want to exclude you, that you may be zealous for them. But it is good to be zealous in a good thing always, and not only when I am present with you. My little children, for whom I labor in birth, until Christ is formed in you. I would like to be present with you now and to change my tone, for I have my doubts. I have doubts about you. Okay. So let's let's start from um, um, verse 8 onwards. Okay. Um, just a minute. Let's go to verse 8. And... Um, So, so Paul here is saying, you know, you indeed when you did not go, know God, you served those who, which by nature are not gods. Okay, so you served these, uh, served you know false gods, and uh, of course, you know, this is a Gentile church. So he's saying that um, you know you you uh, you uh, served these gods. And um, these false gods, because you did not know, right? You were ignorant. You did not know God, but now you are known by Him, or rather, uh, you, so now that you know God, but rather you are known by God. You know, he uses that word, um, the, the Greek word there, which means ginosko, uh, uh, which means that you know Him intimately, right? He's not just, uh, you know, you uh, know, you just not this information, but also you, know, you experienced. Right, uh, you know him intimately. So now that you are known by God, um, you know how is it that you are turning again to the weak 
and beggarly you know he uses um that word beggar uh, beggarly meaning somebody who's in need who is begging uh, so how are you that how is it that you're turning again to those principles so in other words he's saying that these are things which lack the full power which lack the fullness like it had a role these laws these traditions um now these laws had a role and this was the role right in order to show you which was wrong in order to point you to the truth in order to keep you safe till the fullness of time till jesus would come so that you might receive redemption through him now this had a place this had a role now that is over now how can you go back to it because this is weak it is beggarly meaning it is it is weak it is it does not have any power against the things of the flesh right so in other words if it said okay uh, this is sin don't do it in fact your sinful nature would prompt you to do it right it had no power to put to death the deeds of the body it had no power to put to uh, to bring to an end the things of the flesh you know, that was only by the spirit it is only by the spirit of the lord right so so these principles these precepts these laws did not it just told you that you were sinful it confined the whole world under sin right so it lacked something right it had its purpose it had its place but still it lacked something it could not give you righteousness it could not make you righteous only jesus could right so he's saying how can you turn again uh to these weak and beggarly elements to which you desire to become or come under bondage right that is um it was was nine so he's saying you know so now you just want to come and uh, uh, bring yourself again <clears throat> excuse me bring yourself again to a place of you know submission and uh, bring yourself to be you know like a slave even to these elements again to these principles to these practices why right it has it, it is weak it is lacking so he uses strong words it's weak and beggarly elements okay let's go to verse 10 so verse 10 is talking about okay this is what you're doing right in turning back to the weak and beggarly elements and turning back to the law these are some of the things that you're doing what are you doing He's saying verse 10 you observe days and months and seasons and years okay in the sense you are saying that okay one day is better than the other some days are holy some days are not and based on that you are doing certain things right just like how a religious person would do um <clears throat> excuse me so you are saying that okay this day i need to do this this day is is a better day this day is holy you know and uh, this day is not so which means that their whole you know their whole uh, life uh, revolved around this observing okay what is a good day what is a good time is it a good day to do this is it a good time to do this right rather than being led by the spirit of god right so uh, you're doing this so verse 11 i am afraid for you lest i have labored for you in vain so so paul is just confessing is saying you know i'm afraid uh, all the work that i've done you know is it is it empty is it uh, is it a waste all the, all that i have labored right so uh, it's talking about this ministry and the ministry work that he's done and and uh, uh, so the word used there you know it's like uh, it's hard work it's like labor so he has spent a lot of time with them he has spent explaining things with them he has undergone hardship uh saying that hard work that i've done and i'm thinking you know is it is it a waste now like is it futile okay uh verse 12 <clears throat> brethren i urge you to become like me okay <clears throat> excuse me for i became like you you have not injured me at all so you're saying you know you become like me for i became like you in the sense you know i 
you know what 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 was the change uh, well he he was very much a jewish person who who observed these things earlier right he says he was zealous in uh, uh, for the ways of his father uh, and uh, father meaning you know of his forefathers um, so he he exceeded far more in judaism uh, compared to his own peers you know his contemporaries he he went uh, he excelled in it so uh, he was such a person but he changed and he's saying you become like me you know all that he actually put aside so that he could find freedom in christ all that he put, put aside when he realized that righteousness came through faith uh, righteousness uh, and salvation is by grace so he's saying you know you become like me for i i became like you in the sense i became a person uh, who was not held by the law like a non jewish person like you a gentile i became like you so you become like me right um and he, and he's saying you know you have not injured me at all you know you've not hurt me uh, you've not uh, you know by your actions it's not like i'm offended or i'm bitter uh, you have not hurt me right you know that because of physical infirmity i preach the gospel to you at the first so in the next uh, few verses um so what he's saying is that um, you know i so we, like we don't know what kind of physical infirmity that he had right so what we see is that he did undergo persecution and uh, you know when we when we read um, you know we see that he was actually left for the dead right uh, they beat him up and uh, he was um, you know he he was down and uh, they just thought he was dead and then they uh, and then they left him and they went right so uh, he was persecuted to that extent and he was left there so maybe you know uh, maybe it could be a reference to that uh, whatever you know we don't know but the thing is that um, you know he when he came to preach the gospel in galatia to these believers you know he it was uh, with that kind of a thing in the flesh the trial in the flesh he had these things going uh, happening right so says um, um uh but you did not despise or reject this trial which is which was in my flesh you did not despise or reject but you received me I said this is how when i brought the gospel when i shared the gospel this gospel of salvation of by salvation by grace through faith when i came and shared you received me i said you received me as an angel of god you received me even as you would receive christ jesus you know that is how you received me and uh, you know and but then what was the blessing you enjoyed right for i bear you witness that if possible you know such was your love and affection uh, and the way in which you received the gospel you know if possible you would have even you know plucked your own eyes and given to me you know it was it was it was like that now that's how you you were you know when i first came to you now have i become your enemy because i speak the truth verse 16 right? i'm i'm actually speaking the truth so now because i'm speaking the truth is it you know is it causing you to distance yourself are you are you, you know treating me like an enemy you know just he so is is reminding them of the time when he shared the gospel and they received the gospel uh, and how you know how they 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 considered him you know as as, as someone to whom they would even you know uh, lay down their lives and you know you said you would even pluck out your eyes and uh, you know give it to me um but now saying that you know what has happened now you know that things seem to have changed you have, you've turned to another gospel and and uh, you're treating me like an enemy have i become your enemy because i'm speaking the truth then um then we see that uh, in verse 17 it's talking about the false brethren it's talking about those who have brought this other you know other gospel thing they zealously quote you you know they zealously come and they they invite you and uh, uh, it's as if they are quoting you even right so they they do that uh, with with zeal with enthusiasm and and they do that um but the reality is this right uh, so 
they zealously uh, do this but it's for no good okay it is not for a good cause that they are coming and spending time and uh, they want you to follow them it is not for a good objective it's not for a good end so what is it so he's saying they want to exclude you that you may be zealous for them they want to exclude you and the work uh, word again the greek word used there means that they want to you know isolate you they want to even like it's like shutting you up in a room right they want to exclude you okay, uh, that you might be zealous for them for their cause right they are they're preventing you they are shutting you up so that you might be zealous for them that you might in their cause or in following them um so that is the that is the objective why they are pursuing why they are coming after and why they are zealously quoting you okay um verse 18 said it is good to be zealous okay as as believers you know you know you need to be zealous um so it is good to be zealous but in a good thing when something is of the truth when something is you know of god when something is uh, is, is the truth uh, brought in by the spirit which liberates now it's it's good to be zealous in a good thing and not only when i'm present with you so yeah, uh, you know it's 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 in my absence also excuse me so paul is saying you know it's it's not only when i'm when i'm with you but when i'm whether i'm present whether i'm absent um, you know you you be uh, you know you um, you continue to be zealous and you continue to be zealous in a good thing okay um, okay let's look at uh, verse 19 you know my little children for whom i labor in birth again until christ is formed in you i would like to be present with you now and to change my tone for i have doubts about you okay so verse 19 this is my little children for whom i labor in birth until christ is um birth again until christ is formed in you so um you know if you if you go back to um uh, verse uh verse 14 right uh, verse 30 verses 13 and 14 he's talking about how he came he shared the gospel and they received christ right so here in verse 19 he's saying now i labor in birth i labor in birth you know it's like laboring again in birth until christ is uh, he uses that word no for whom i labor in birth again until christ is formed in you now here is something that i'm doing again i'm repeating that process of uh, laboring in birth right and um, you know it, it is uh, intercession interceding for them again reaching out to them again teaching you know the the principles of the, of the elementary principles the foundational things again so it's like it's like laboring in birth again until christ is formed until uh, there is christ likeness right so when we say christ likeness we're talking about you know the character of christ uh, which comes with the truth of christ right? so uh, which uh, which the character uh, character of christ likeness cannot be separated from the the truth uh, which is there in the word so he's saying you know i'm again laboring again doing these things so that christ be formed in you verse 20 i i would like to be present with you and to change my tone for i have doubts about you okay now uh, verses 21 to 31 the last part of this chapter is going to talk about some more information you know from exodus chapter 19 and chapter 20 and he's talking about um uh you know about the covenant okay so let's read through verse 21 uh, tell me you who desire to be under the law do you not hear the law for it is written that abraham had two sons the one by a bond woman the other by a free woman but he who was of the bond woman was born according to the flesh and he of the free woman through promise which things are symbolic for these are the two covenants the one 
from Mount Sinai, which gives birth to bondage, which is Hagar. For this Hagar is Mount Sinai in Arabia and corresponds to Jerusalem, which now is and is in bondage with her children. But the Jerusalem above is free, which is the mother of us all. For it is written, Rejoice, O barren. You who do not bear, break forth and shout. You who are not in labor. For the desolate has many more children than she who has a husband. So it's quoting from, um, from Isaiah, right? um, <clears throat> Isaiah 54. Um, and okay, uh, verse 28. Now we brethren, as Isaac was, are children of promise. But as he who was born according to the flesh then persecuted him who was born according to the spirit, even so it is now. Nevertheless, what does the scripture say? Cast out the bondwoman and her son, for the son of the bondwoman shall not be heir with the son of the free woman. So then, brethren, we are not children of the bondwoman, but of the free okay so he's uh, paul again is addressing those who are still desiring to be under the law and right? who want to go back to the law he's saying you know do you not know what is written right? do you not know the law okay in the law you you read about abraham having two sons now one was uh, from bond from bondage you know out of bondage in the sense out of the flesh uh why according why was it according to the flesh because it was you know god promised um uh, abraham that he would one who would come through him uh, physically right, born to say uh born to sarah would be the heir but because of their own anxieties and because of their you know, unbelief even uh you know because of wrong instruction or listening to uh, Sarah's, you know, uh, instructions, you know, now this situation happened. Um, here you have a son who is born through Hagar and that represents, does not represent um, the, the freedom or the, uh, you know, uh, does not represent the covenant, but represents actually the, the bondage represents the law right so this is how it was now he who was of the bond woman was born according to the flesh and of the free woman through the promise now these are again symbolic right he's saying you know this is again symbolic it's it's referring to a deeper truth now what is it verse 24 now there are there are two covenants one from mount sinai okay you know exodus 19 exodus 20 where, where Moses goes to Mount Sinai and God gives those commands, commandments, and he comes and shares with the, the children of Israel, right? Now, saying, now that is, that is something that confines all under sin. Yes, it, it shows you, like, you know, we, we read about it, what purpose is the law, right? Chapter 3, verse 19. So, you know, he has answered that. What purpose does the law serve? Uh, it was added because of transgressions till the seed should come to whom the promise was made, etc. Right? So he, here again, he's talking about, you know, this, uh, what happened at Sinai. Now that uh, is actually confining or bringing everyone and confining everyone to sin, saying that, yes, you, you are, you are a sinner. But the, the, the uh, other covenant, which is uh, because of, which is from above, the new Jerusalem. Now, now there he's saying that that is that is freedom. Now, uh, verse twenty six. But the Jerusalem above is free. It is not confining people to the law or confining or bringing them, uh, saying that you are a sinner. But it's actually freeing them, bringing them out of bondage and into freedom in Christ, right? So um, so he's saying this is symbolic. Uh, verse 25, for this Hagar is Mount Sinai in Arabia 
and corresponds to Jerusalem, which now is, in the sense, people who have not yet in Jerusalem, uh, people who are there, who are who who are still following the law, who are still following, um, you know, um, not coming to Christ. It it actually represents them, right? Um, they are still in bondage. But the Jerusalem from above is free, which is the mother of us all, in the sense, you know, out of that we were born again. Out of that gospel, by the word and the spirit, we were born again. Now, now that is something which has made us free. Um, and referring to Isaiah 54, so Rejoice, O barren, you did not bear. Break forth and shout, you are not in labor, for the desolate has more children than she who has a husband. And we, brethren, as Isaac was, now Isaac was born to Sarah, and Isaac was born out of promise that God made. Now, we are like Isaac, as Isaac was, our children of promise because of the, 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 the covenant that was made to the seed, the seed of Abraham, right? that in you nation shall be blessed, referring to um, you know, salvation, referring to uh, what would happen in Christ, right? So, um, but as he who was born according to the flesh, uh, verse 29, as he who was born according to the flesh then persecuted him who was born according to the spirit, even so it is now. So we read about Ishmael, we read about Isaac, we see that there was always tension, we see that there was always persecution by Ishmael, um, you know, against uh, against Isaac, right? And uh, and later we see that um, uh, the people, you know, who were with Ishmael again persecuting um, Isaac, right? So he's saying that those, um, even so, it is it is today, even now, the same thing happens that those who are born according to the flesh persecute those who are born according to the spirit. You know, uh, we, he's talking about how the Jews persecute those who are Gentile and how he himself, you know, when he was ignorant, he persecuted the church, which was, you know, um, which comprised of those who were born according to the spirit. And, and he was someone who was born according to the, I mean, who was, um, uh, who was uh, under the law and who was uh, following the law, but he was persecuting that which was by grace, right? that which was brought about by the Spirit. So he was persecuting that. So we're saying this is the reality that those who are born according to the flesh persecute those who are born according to the Spirit, even so it is now. Okay. And um, nevertheless, what does the scripture say? You know, what is the what is the instruction of scripture? You know, cast out, have nothing to do with, right? For uh, so cast out the bond woman and her son, for the son of the bond woman shall not be heir with the son of the free woman. So, so the thing is this that you know we are called out of slavery and called to be sons and daughters of God, children of God. And because we are sons and daughters, we are heirs of God. Okay, now that is what has happened. Out of slavery, into family, into inheritance. Right? Now that is something that, that you are experiencing, that you're enjoying. But if you are this, and if you are going back to the law, Know this, the son of the bond woman shall not be heir with the son of the free woman. Okay, verse 30. It's very clear. Okay, you cannot call yourself an heir and receive all that inheritance which God has for you. Right? You cannot be an heir if you're turning back to the law. So you see, you know, sometimes we think, you know, why is Paul so upset? Why was Paul so irritated? He's calling them, you foolish Galatians. Why? You know, all that they're doing was, was, wasn't it a good thing? 
right? Uh, okay, all these, you know, we might even say, oh, they were so devoted, oh, they were so pious, you know, they're going back to circumcision, they're going back to, you know, they keep certain days and months and years and seasons and they're observing this, you know, they're so devout. But, but Paul knew, you know, and he's conveying, communicating the truth. The truth is this, that you have been actually brought out, you have been set free, and you are an heir. Now, understand that God said that if you are going to be following the law or if you are going to be recognizing yourself as children or sons of the bond woman, then you cannot be an heir of the free woman. You cannot be this. You cannot be an heir uh, with the son of the free woman. No, you cannot be an heir. You cannot consider yourself an heir. So, in other words, he's saying you cannot. You know, you if you're going to back to the law, then you are actually cutting off yourself from the family of God. You're saying I'm no more a son. You're saying I'm no more a child of God. I'm no more an heir of God. So, understand the seriousness of what you are actually considering, what you are actually doing, right? When you go back to the law, okay? So, so that, uh, that is how uh, chapter four ends, okay? So um, let's, uh, let's start off with chapter five and then we'll take a break, right? Chapter five, stand fast therefore in the liberty by which Christ has made us free and do not be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Indeed, I, Paul, say to you that if you become circumcised, Christ will profit you nothing. And I testify again to every man who becomes circumcised that he is a debtor to keep the whole law. You have become estranged from Christ. You who attempt to be justified by law. You have fallen from grace. For we, for we through the Spirit, eagerly wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything but faith working through love. Okay, so we'll take a break and when we come back, we'll we'll go through this. Okay, All right. You take a break now for 10 minutes. <laughs> 